Coming up on today's Locked On Senators. There's still no sale yet, but the Melnick Estate and the NHL are supposedly feeling mounting pressure to announce their preferred bidder. As they should. And we're getting deeper into our NHL draft prospect profiles with players ranked 18 to 20 today. It's Edward Saleh, Callum Ritchie, and Samuel Hanzek. We're also getting deeper into the rumor mill and another gritty bottom six forward has been linked to the Ottawa Senators. All that and more on today's edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Welcome inside episode 818 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, please like and subscribe wherever you download your podcast. We're also available on YouTube where we are putting out bonus draft profiles every weekend. And last weekend, we had some that Sens fans might recognize the name or the player as we had a 67 among some others. And we know Pierre Dorian loves winners, so we profiled two USHL Clark Cup champions. Today is Monday, June 12th in Pilsy. I wish I could tell you the Senators were sold, but I cannot. Yeah, I mean, this is no surprise to me at all. Ross, at this point, I'm wondering if the the Melnick uh, daughters will just end up keeping the team and it never gets sold. Like, this is out of control. Out of control. But it sounded on Friday's episode, big thumbnail, Steve Apostolopoulos out. (laughs) He's gone. And then it felt like, okay, now the dominoes are going to start falling. Not the case. Haven't heard a whisper beyond that. Now, Bruce Garriock, who's been all over reporting this, he says that especially Michael Anlauer believes that the pressure is on. It's mounting. A decision has to be made, right? Yeah. I don't know, because now it's coming out that they're looking, the Melnick estate, to put the capital gains tax Which would on, be huge. on the buyer. In terms of they're going to be in the highest sale bracket, you would think, close to a billion dollars, hopefully. We'll see what it ends up being at the end of the day. A lot of numbers out there. But that, I don't know in terms of business, whether that's unprecedented or not, but it feels like when you're buying something that is about, what, 400 million above the market value as of last year, Forbes had the Senators at $650 million, it would feel like that bonus money that, not bonus, but that added money that the the Melnick Estate is getting is for them to help pay off their debt and for them to help pay their capital gains tax. So, Capital gains, no longer just a uh, easy headline whenever the Sens add someone on tsn.ca. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And Ross, like, this is almost becoming a game of leverage chicken. Like, in any business deal, uh, you and I are expert business negotiators. The art of the deal, we know all about that. Well, you know chickens. I know chickens, yes. Um, but the thing is, You have leverage and you need to flex it and you need to use it, but you can't flex it too much because then people start saying, to heck with this, I'm out. And people have done that. The highest bidder, Steve Apostolopoulos, was like, I'm putting up the biggest amount of money here and you guys are still messing around trying to get capital gains tax. The Nico Sparks group is uh, fiddling with what the offer is. The bids keep changing. So I'm, I'm not about to be a part of this anymore. So... I just feel like at this point, the leverage that the senators have in being like, there's so much interest in us. Our value has gone up from 600 and so million to a billion. We're going to flex all our leverage. That's running out because they're playing a little bit with fire here, trying to hold on to that leverage. And now, Ross, from what it seems like, there's only two people left that are even considering entertaining the idea of playing along with this game. Yeah, well, no, three. The Nico Sparks group's still there, still trying to figure it out. Whereas from 32 Thoughts and Elliot Friedman, like we're recording a little bit later because Pilsy and I wanted to like go through and listen because Elliot Friedman over the weekend really did a lot of digging onto the Senator's sale. And 
he believes that the Kimmel's bid is higher than Land and Lauer's right now. So that's an interesting nugget that I wasn't completely aware of. It's also a bigger group of people that are uh, in. We already knew the weekend was involved, and a few others. The artist known as the weekend, I should say, um, is involved, and along with Jamie Saltler, the other billionaire who's been added to that group as well. So they want it bad. But Ann Lauer thinks it's his to lose. Obviously, he has a relationship with Jeff Molson, who sits on the executive committee as a, the majority owner of the Montreal Canadiens, where mm-hmm. Ann Lauer has been um, you know, a minority owner there for a number of years since 2009. And I just think that the process is dwindling. I still think, and we're going to stand by it, Pilsy, the Ottawa Senators at the end of this will have the best owner they've had in their history. So I think that we can kind of you know, take a deep breath and understand that and continue to get towards the draft, continue to get through the rumor mill, And on that note, Scott Lawton of the Philadelphia Flyers, his name's come up. Flyers, full rebuild. Last week, we talked about Carter Hart. They're for sale. They've got the for sale sign up front. They're calling everyone out. It's like the great Glebe garage sale. Everybody's, you know, perusing the street, seeing what kind of gems they can get. And Scott Lawton just won the world championships with his old coach, DJ Smith, who he won a Memorial Cup with. Pierre Dorian loves winners. And Elliot Friedman reporting that he's been a player that Ottawa has liked for a very long time. Yeah, and I mean, it makes sense, right? He's uh, he's a bottom six guy that can actually put up some offensive numbers, something the Ottawa Senators have not been able to find recently, have tried to find, and things haven't worked out. He's a guy that is a little bit more veteran. I believe he's, what, 28 years old? I'm just double-checking here. 29 years old. He's three more years left on his deal at $3 million. So you get a guy that has great NHL experience, some playoff experience with the Flyers back in the day, and is a DJ Smith guy who, as you just mentioned, uh, had success with success with DJ over at the world. So there's definitely reasons to be interested. And this team does need a little bit more veteran punch to it, especially in that bottom six. But Ross, for me, this deal cannot happen as long as Matthew Joseph is here. You cannot have two players in the bottom six making, I know Matthew Joseph is just under 3 million, but let's call it a 3 million. You can't have wanted you to have to say exactly. Yeah. You can't have two players making 3 million. And then Shane Pinto is up for a new contract and I I have no idea where that's going to land, but it's, it's not going to be a cheap deal as far as uh, third line centerman goes in my opinion. So at at least depending on how long-term they go. So for me, The only way you can entertain this idea of Scott Lawton to the Sens is if it includes Matthew Joseph no longer being here. And I would take a a different avenue down the path of no return for this deal. And that's the fact that the Philadelphia Flyers have reportedly already declined trades for Scott Lawton that involve a late first round pick. Yeah. So they're putting a premium on this asset. And he's the type of player that you win with come playoffs. He's a free hard nose. And by the way, great guy off the ice from everything I've heard about him would fit in the culture perfectly in Ottawa, but it's just to fit 3 million in a bottom six role without knowing what's going to happen with the brinket, I think would be kind of a lot for this stage. This could be to me. And I don't think he's going to be on the market that long, which is why I don't think it's going to work. But once you're, the Brinkets are decided. Once your Pinto RFA, even Eric Brandstrom, who's up for a new contract, once you kind of have a better situation of where you're at with the cap, this could be like an August trade where you're like, you're still looking to improve your team. Oh, that could make sense. I just don't see it. If they're turning down a, a late first round pick right now, I don't think the Sen should be the ones to go over the top and make an, uh, an offer they can't refuse. No, absolutely not. And I think... This is a player that will get dealt at the draft uh, or before. It'll have 2023 draft implications. That's what the Flyers want. Like you mentioned, it's it's a full fire sale over there. And I think if you're going to start a rebuild, you want to start it as soon as possible. Like once you've made the decision to rebuild, don't mess around. Tear it down, get draft picks, collect prospects, collect uh, draft capital. And there's no better time to do it when then a player has three years left on a deal Teams can then see that as a good investment. And the 2023 draft is among the deepest draft classes in a long time. So I don't think Scott Lawton's going to last as a Philadelphia Flyer until August. And I think that price is going to remain high. I just hope he doesn't go to Toronto or Montreal or Buffalo, a team that Ottawa Mm -hmm. has to play in a nightly capacity because he is the definition of a type of player you love to have on your team. 
and you hate to play against. Just ask Brady Kachuk. Yep. Had a few run-ins with Scott Lawton over the years, but that would have been, all be water under the bridge. Remember Meth told us when Dion Phaneuf came to the Sens locker room for the first time, everyone was kind of like side-eyeing him. And, you know, they'd had so many battles over the years, but the second he's on your team, you just absolutely adore having him there. So Scott Lawton on the trade block, let us know in the comments on YouTube, what kind of offer would you make for Scott Lawton? Or is this the type of player that you would stay away from? I know, Pilsy. Let me see the mock trades. Let me see him. Sometimes the best mock trades are the ones you don't make. But in this case, we are curious. What's your interest level in this player, Scott Lawton? And what would be the highest you would go in a trade for Scott Lawton? And if anybody listening or viewing has any experience with billion dollar deals and capital gains taxes, please DM us on Twitter at Send Central. I would like to be educated in that and we will get back to you on tomorrow's show. But Pilsy talked about just how loaded this draft class is, enough so that our 18th ranked prospect on the average of seven scouts that we use, he's seventh on one of them and another couple have some higher ranks as well. Three interesting players dissected next. You're listening to Locked On Senators. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Athletic Greens. Guys, getting a routine is difficult. Everyone's got busy lives these days. It seems impossible to keep up with your health, your social life, your finances, work, family, everything like that. But Athletic Greens is going to make keeping up with your health and having a healthy routine much easier. Even someone like me can have this routine and Ross as well. He's on the AG1 kick here because all it is is one scoop of AG1 powder into your cup of water every morning. That's it. Now you may be thinking, okay, one scoop, that there can't be that many benefits. You're wrong. With one scoop, you're getting 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, superfoods, probiotics, and more. So you're starting your day off right. The special blend of ingredients supports so much. Your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, aging, all of these things, and it's lifestyle friendly. So whether you eat uh, keto, paleo, 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 sorry, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, AG1 is good for you, and it's going to help your sleep quality, recovery, mental clarity, and alertness. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance from Athletic Greens. Today's episode is also brought to you by Farm to Fork. Farm to Fork Delivery. .ca. Head over to farm to fork delivery.ca and taste the farm to fork difference. And I'm telling you, you'll never go back to grocery store meats because it's so easy to have this hormone free, ethically raised, all these great foods just in the freezer, individually vacuum sealed right off the butcher's table. They keep all the freshness in, and you only need to pull out what you need that night. It's so easy to eat healthy, eat well, eat well, but also don't be rushing to the grocery store because, oh, the food in the fridge is bad again. No, you don't need that. Just pull what you want for dinner that night and get your veggies, get your starches, and away you go. Check out all the great bundles they have on farmtoforkdelivery.ca. And because you're supporting local, you need to be told that it's not just local to Ottawa. Sure, it's a local Ottawa company. Our guy, Derek, right in the heart of Ottawa, But what we know about Farm to Fork is if you're in Western Quebec, if you're in the GTA, if you're up in Collingwood, you can order farmtoforkdelivery.ca. What a Father's Day gift. Father's Day is a week away. What better way to say thanks, Dad, than to give him a steak he can't resist. So head to farmtofork.ca and use our promo code SENDS10. SENDS10 gets you 10% off your first purchase. We know you're going to love it. Go try it today. farmtoforkdelivery.ca. Taste the farm to fork difference. You will never, ever, ever go back to grocery store meats. All right, Pilsy. Senator on Twitter. Great handle, by the way. He says, I've never heard of somebody selling a house and then asking the person to pay off the rest of their mortgage. 
<laughs> I mean, yeah, well, not quite the same. Capital gains is a little different than having a mortgage, but yes, it uh, it, it does seem strange. For my dumb brain, I thought it was hilarious. So we will see what's next in the, what? how do I say this? The never-ending sale of the Ottawa Senators? Like, is that a fair kind of nomer at this point? We're 217 days in. Well, the sale has not ended yet. So as of right now, uh, 126, Monday, June 12th, it is a never-ending sale. Oh, goodness gracious, Pilsy. So what better way to distract ourselves from a never-ending sale than with a little Speaking bit? of sale. <laughs> oh, did you really just go there? <laughs> I mean, same spelling. Coming in at number 18 on our Locked On Senators NHL Draft Rankings, it's Edward Sale out of Czechia. Now, this guy, when I see him, I just see offense. Yeah, definitely he has a lot of offensive talent, that's for sure. I mean, there's even some quotes, uh, EP has uh, some EP scouts. This is a guy, Saleh is a guy that divided elite prospect scouts, and some are so high on him, calling him a top 10 talent. So the talent is certainly there. You cannot, um, you can't go against that, I'll agree. And why it's tough to evaluate him as well is he's in a league that doesn't, get the shine that the other ones do he plays in his native Czechia right so he's been playing pro since he was 15 years old but it's not at the same level like Adalbert Dvorsky left Slovakia at 16 so that he could play in a more competitive league in Sweden whereas Edward Sale went the uh, the kind of unconventional route and said you know what I want to stay home yeah. and with that came 43 games with Brno with the Czechia league. And I know our guy Prague Senator is going to be mad at my pronunciation. I'm sorry. We love you. We will get your pronunciations for some other checks. We'll get to, but seven goals, seven assists, good for 14 points in 43 games and really kept his nose out of any problems. Only two penalty minutes in 43 games this year played well at the world under 18s at six points in five games and Pilsy. Not only is elite prospects as a team divided on him, but so are our rankings as well. Yeah, absolutely. So Bob McKenzie did not have him ranked. His rankings are only the top 12. Craig Button has him at 7th overall. Corey Pronman at 24th. Scott Wheeler at 14. Rachel Dory does not have him ranked. She only had a top 10 at time of recording. Chris Peters at 21. And Elite Prospects at 25th, giving Edward Saleh an average rank of 18.2. What is the number one thing you noticed when you're watching clips of Edward Sale? Well, when I noticed uh, is that he has a couple tricks up his sleeve that he likes to do. He loves the simple backhand deke through goalies five hole and it works. Uh, definitely as a goaltender, Ross, we know that's a tricky one to get a read on. And it, you look silly when they just slide a backhand uh, through your five hole. But Sale has really mastered that. And he has an accurate shot that... He could just beat goalies clean with a soft shot. Like he's not blazing with speed and power with that shot. It's just he's going to pick that corner and he'll float it top shelf on you. So definitely the talent is there. Now, that's the high end talent part of Sally that some of the EP scouts love. I'd like to get to the opposite side of the spectrum here, Ross, because some of the EP scouts are not fond of Sally. And some of them even say, I'm not sure if this kid even likes playing hockey. And you mentioned that he stayed home. So clearly, you know, the drive to become a better prospect wasn't at the top of his list. Now, I'm not I'm not knocking him for that. Nothing wrong with being a kid and wanting to stay home and being comfortable in your environment. That's totally fine. But most of the prospects you see that have the skill and potential of Saleh, at a certain age, they say, okay, I've got to move on to a next level or I've got to try something different here. And it just seems like Saleh did not do that. And you mentioned two PIMs. Well, to get penalty minutes, usually you got to be trying. Like usually you're trying to stop plays from happening. Usually you're in the middle of battles. Usually you're all around the action. And from what I saw, Edward Saleh has no interest in doing that, Ross. I reference it to, it reminds me of that guy in beer league 
who always talks about, oh yeah, I would have went to the NHL, but I blew my knee out in college. And all he does is cherry pick at the blue line and waits for a pass and tries a dangle and misses the net. And you're calling for him to change on the ice and he's just floating around, hanging out, doesn't care. That's what I get from Edward Sale here, Ross. Ed- Sale is my lowest rated prospect yet. I've got him at two and a half stars. I'm officially declaring Sale as a do not draft. Whoa, a yeah. do not draft. Do not draft. Like, you seem very sure about that, too. Well, just from what I'm reading and what I've watched, it just, like, I don't want to say arrogant, because obviously I, I don't know Edward. Uh, I, like, I'm just reading stuff and watching, so I don't know his personality. But the vibes I'm getting is he just, there's there's no there's no drive. There's no motor. Nikita Filatov vibes? Yeah, kind of. Uh, yeah, Philly don't do rebounds. Uh, Sally don't do rebounds. And all you need to do is go to Elite Prospects. Uh, they have really great analytics on their guide. And not many of his analytics show very fairly. The, that's the thing. The skill is there, but it almost seems like he just kind of shrugs it off and is like, yeah, I've got this talent. I don't, I don't need or want to try that hard. I have maybe the most apt quote here from Scott Wheeler. He might drive some coaches crazy, but you don't need all 12 of your forwards to be worker types. And I like him to become a talented playmaker who plays well off of drivers. So he like, he gives me a bit of Mike Hoffman vibes. Like the talent's yeah. undeniable, but sometimes you're going to look and be like, what are you doing? Here's the issue with that, Ross. He, that's correct. You don't need 12 guys to do that. But if you have one top tier guy that decides not to do that, well, then the other guys that are grinding and busting their ass are like, He's not doing it. He's getting top power play time. He's on the top line with our best playmakers. Why would I bust my ass if it's not going to not gonna rise me or get me better in the coach's favor? So I just feel like this is a guy that could really cause issues in a locker room. And I, I mentioned before, Ross, I would way rather have a guy who you don't doesn't have the talent but works hard and you don't need to put that work ethic and drive into them over a guy that has the talent and you got to find some way to motivate him. And that's what I'm getting from Saleh here. So I, yeah, if, if I'm a team, I'm letting someone else roll the dice on him. And that team you think could be in this 15 to 20 range. Do you think? I mean, it's, it's tough to know. Cause like we shown on our rankings, some people are high on him and some people are low on him. If, if you're asking me, if I'm a team between 10 and 20, I'm not touching them. No. And you, you talk about some fair points, valid criticism, but there's a reason why Craig Button has him at seven on his list, right? There's a reason why he's been able to produce at a higher clip than Yakov Voracek, Thomas Hurdle in the same age category. The talent is there. Yep. It's an offensive weapon, but it does make it a harder one to really want because you talk like we're Senator show. And if you're watching this right after Edward Saleh was picked on your favorite team, there is potential there. There's no doubt there yep. is potential there. But when the senators talk about how they draft, it's always the person first. And I'm not saying he's a bad person. And I don't know. Him. Yeah. But you want a guy who is competitive and maybe this is the better way to put it. The senators always make sure they draft kids who adore hockey, who mm -hmm. love hockey because to be the best, you have to be all in all the time. So I would be a little curious, a little hesitant perhaps about that with Edward Sally, but the talent is undeniable for the man who comes in at number 18 on our Locked On Senators NHL Draft Rankings. We're going to have plenty of these, so head over on YouTube, and each individual profile is there for you for the top 70 NHL Draft Prospects. All right, coming up on the show, two well, one centerman, one winger, both imposing forwards. Pilsy, I'm fired up to discuss both of them. Yep, two more great prospects coming up, that's for sure. You're listening to Locked On Senators. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at eBay Motors. Everyone knows about eBay, but did you know you can get parts and accessories for your car at eBay Motors? That is the place you got to check out because for a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. And it's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay's guaranteed fit, you can be sure every part fits 
the first time around. No more fiddling around. No more trying to see, hey, why doesn't this seem like it's working? Well, just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check so you know the part will fit or you get your money back. It's that simple. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you can be confident you'll find the right part for your vehicle. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. So get the right parts, get the right fit, and get the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. Let's ride with ebaymotors.com. Hilsey, a reminder to everyone that you can follow the show on Twitter at Send Central. And make sure you're locked on Senators on Instagram as well. The Road to 2000 continues on Instagram. Just hit 1800 today. So thank you for everyone who vibes with us or vents with us after each and every Senators game. Right now, it could be the off season, but it's rumor mill season. We've got lots of great episodes going back. So make sure you check out any of our end of season player profiles for the Senators. Like we have covered the Sens top to bottom, side to side, front to back since the last game on April 13th. Yeah, absolutely. And I love, Ross, that there's like eras of this podcast. Like uh, when our friend on Twitter, I believe it was Kels, uh, said she just found uh, this podcast and was asking people what should I listen to. I love looking through the answers. And uh, Nick Spence had a lot of great ones being like, you got to go with any Igor interview. Uh, at a lot of the reporters, uh, the Cabo trip, the vibes were off the charts. So there's so many different uh, types of Locked On Centers podcast episode you can find yourself listening to. Coming in at number 19 on the 2023 Locked On Senators NHL Draft Rankings from the Oshawa Generals centerman, Callum Ritchie. Yes, Callum Ritchie from the Generals. <laughs> nice. I love that salute there, Ross. Uh, this is a guy who already has decent size. You love to see that. Six foot two, 187 pounds. He's an assistant captain, and he had in 59 games played. 24 goals, 35 assists, good for 59 points, point per game guy, not bad. And six points in five playoff games, nine points in seven games at the U18s. Are you catching my drift? This guy can put up points at a point per game clip. Not only that, but I would call him the complete package. because He's the kind of guy where, yeah, the production's there, but when you watch this guy, he's an imposing figure right away, six foot two, 185 pounds, and it almost feels like the frame can even fill out further. Like if this guy can be in the NHL playing at 200 plus pounds with the hands he has, I think he's going to be a hell of an NHL player. I'm really excited about Callum Ritchie here. 59 games with Oshawa, 24 goals, 35 assists, 59 points, good for 35 penalty minutes as well. And Pilsy, this guy wears a letter as a 17 year old. Like that doesn't go unnoticed to me as a guy who has leadership qualities. And it's not only in the OHL that he's worn a letter. He's worn a letter with the Canadian uh, team on his age group as well. And I just see him as, as a guy who's just kind of scratching the surface of what he can be. And and sorry, I'm, I'm talking about the wrong, no letter yet, but he may as well with team Canada, nine points in seven games at the U 18s. He had 10 points in five games at the Ivan Halinka Gretzky cup. So he's a guy who everywhere he's gone, he's been a point producer. And I think this guy, Callum Ritchie goes higher than where we have him at 19 on our average rankings. I think he's going to be a kind of guy where a team who sees all these high-end centermen going off the board early could be like, you know what? This guy's not that different from those guys. If he picks up the pace a little bit, I think that's the one thing that you can nitpick about him. Can he, when the games get, get faster in the moment, can he elevate as well and keep up speed? But Pilsy, as you can read off with these rankings, like there's a pretty wide varying opinion about what kind of player or where the player like Callum Ritchie will go in this draft. Yeah, I agree with a lot that you said there, Ross. Uh, So Bob McKenzie not ranked again. That's a top 12 ranking as of yet. Craig Button has him at 13. Corey Pronman at 27. Scott Wheeler at 19. Rachel Doring not ranked. We only have a top 10 from her. Chris Peters, 18, Elite Prospects, 14, for an average rank at 18.2. And where would you like to see his development go next season? What's the one thing? Because I just named a ton of positives about Callum Ritchie's game. What's something that if you're a fan of a team that just drafted Callum Ritchie right now, what are you hoping for next on his path towards the NHL? What you're hoping for next is some improved skating. And uh, this is nitpicking because I agree with you. He is a very well-rounded prospect. So, sure, 
you can always get better. Everyone, no matter what, if we're talking about prospects or people podcasting. in life, podcasting, there's always room for improvement unless you're Sally and you've decided that's enough. Um, so with Callum Ritchie, his skating is the one thing where I would say is not quite up to snuff. And I think it hasn't slowed him down. It hasn't made him a bad player or a bad prospect. So it's not even that big of a detriment. It's just there's one item where I would say he's not as skilled as he is in other areas. I think that's a very fair, a very apt way to describe Callum Ritchie's game. But if this guy comes back after working with a power skating coach all summer, I wouldn't be surprised if he's like one of the best players on the world junior team next year outside of the obvious guys. But I think that he could be like kind of the role that Ridley Gregg played at the, at the world juniors where he's producing points, but also being used in different situations. And I just see if I'm a GM and I'm looking at Callum Ritchie, I'm looking at a guy who you can kind of mold into whatever player you want him to be in your lineup. You don't have to say, Oh, if he's, Like a Gabe Perot, if he's not a top six, is he going to be effective? Like Callum Ritchie, I think you could play him at wing, you could play him at center, you could play him on the penalty kill, you could play him on the power play, Mm -hmm. and he will morph his game into making it valuable to your team. So I I think that this would be a player, whoever takes him from 10, I think from 10 on, I'll say, hey, that's a good pick. I I see what they see in him. I agree. And the thing is, he's a good hockey player. He's not a lethal sniper. He's not a playmaker. He's a good all-around hockey player. And the thing that sticks out to me the most and that EP really uh, made clear is his ability to win battles along the wall is among the best in this class. Like, And he just plays such an efficient game. Like, You're not going to see him out there doing eye-popping dangles and having highlight reel goals. But you're going to see him shift in and shift out. And you're like, another great shift for Callum Ritchie here. So I just think this is a a guy that coaches are going to love. A team isn't going to regret drafting. They may look at, uh, you know, uh, players available and be like, ah, maybe there's more upside here. Maybe we left a little bit on the table here, but you're not going to regret having a guy like Callum Ritchie in your prospect pipeline. You definitely won't. And again, just the ability to kind of, the, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder here of what your team sees Callum Ritchie as becoming. But what I know is, is that the EP draft guide put it just so aptly. Callum Ritchie is your favorite scouts, favorite player. Yes. Yeah. He is just able to be whatever you need him to be that given night. He's competitive and he didn't just come on the scene second overall pick in the OHL Mm -hmm. in his draft year there. So this isn't a guy who you're like shocked that he's come out of nowhere. It's just been a gradual progression. Loves the game, able to just kind of add elements over and over again. So man, I I can't say enough good things. The only nitpick is, does he lack pace? Is he going to be able to step into an NHL lineup or is he the kind of guy where it's like, Hey, he'll play two more years in the OHL. Yep. Then he'll probably play one or two years in the AHL. And by the time he's 24, the smarts aren't going anywhere. The shot, yeah. the playmaking, but you're expecting a guy who's maybe going to be a little bit stronger and able to, you know, push a little harder when it comes to skating. I want to push back on that just a little, Ross, because I think he's not going to lack pace. I think he's a guy that's going to play with pace. Okay. But will he lack speed? Maybe he will lack speed. Because I think shift in and shift out, he's going to be right in the mix all the time. He's trying to win those loose puck paddles, trying to win those board paddles. So it's not like he's going to be hanging around and stuck behind plays. But if there's a loose puck battle in the neutral zone, can he beat the defender there and make a play to, to drive towards the net? Right now, maybe not. I would love to see the Nashville Predators take a swing. okay yeah i could see him fitting in there yeah i'm calling my shot here i'm calling the nashville predators at 15 as a team that i would love he's not going to be there for nashville 24 with edmonton's pick no he's at home he's not but 15 to me would Mm -hmm. be the perfect spot this also screams kyle dubas by the way with pittsburgh this (laughs) screams kyle dubas well he didn't play for the sault st marie greyhounds though i don't know Hey, he might get traded there next year. If dude, yeah, if true, hard. yeah. No, but that's the range. Like any, yes. I said anywhere after ten, I think will be a good pick. But really, like fourteen to seventeen, the Calgary at sixteen, Detroit at seventeen. Right now, those are the areas where I see Callum Ritchie fitting into this draft. But for us, he's number nineteen based on our seven scouts with locked on Senators. And for more draft profiles, we've got seventy coming 
on our YouTube page. So make sure that when your team drafts a player, head over to Locked On Senators. There's a better chance than not that we've got a profile for you to learn more about your next favorite player. All right, Pilsy. Coming in at number 20 on our Locked On Senators NHL draft rankings. We're sticking in the CHL, but we're getting another European. Samuel Hunzik from the Vancouver Giants, a big left winger. Ross, it is so appropriate that Samuel Hunzik plays for the Giants. <laughs> this kid is huge. I mean, I've got him at six foot four, 185 pounds. Uh, he can play center. He can play the wing. And he has experience um, over in Europe in pro leagues. He uh, in 2020, 2021, he had five games in the Slovakia League. And then last season, he played 49 games in the Pro League in Slovakia and finished with 10 goals and four uh, assists, good for 14 points, and then played four playoff games there as well. So it's not like this is a guy that is uncomfortable playing up against men. Now, obviously, the Slovakia League, one of the lower uh, competition level leagues over in Europe, and that's not a slight against them. It's just kind of uh, where they're at right now. But Samuel Honzik is, he's right on that prospect train of Slovaks that this is becoming a country that is becoming powerful when it comes to top end talents uh, in hockey. Yeah, well, good thing because the NHL was better when Slovaks were a yeah. huge part of it in the early to mid 2000s. The, the Charas, the Hosas, the Gabriks, the Dimitras, the list goes on and on. Ziggy Palfi, oh, they need it back. And first and second overall last year with Slavkovsky and Nemec, both very good. And this is already our second Slovak on this year's list, as we've already done Dalibor Dvorsky as well. Samuel Honzik is a bit different than most of those guys outside of Slavkovsky. You can draw the immediate comparable yep. of both being imposing figures. But I think when you look at Samuel Honzik, you're looking at a guy who drives the play, I think, better than Slavkovsky. At least I know Slavkovsky, it's, it's harder to evaluate just off of what we saw in the NHL as an 18-year-old with not much help on his team, but Hanzik, man, he's the kind of winger who wants the puck on his stick. And that's why, like you said, maybe he's a centerman long-term, but I do think that even if he's a winger, he could be that big left shot kind of guy barreling down the wing. And I think a guy who's going to get a lot of assists off of kind of big play drives and kind of throwing the puck in the middle and then allowing kind of your, your rebound to get whacked in. But Man, not afraid of the dirty areas and a guy who I really think is going to be a valuable piece to an NHL franchise. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. And the one thing that I highlighted about Samuel Honzik uh, on my research is this guy is a premium puck protector, especially in junior. Like, good luck to the defenseman trying to get the puck off this stick or attacking four checkers or anything like that. Like, this, there's just no chance. And he's one of those guys where... In junior, if he wants to get to an area of the ice, you're not stopping him. Like, he's oh, just going to get there and he's going to beat you. And he wins those puck battles more often than not. And I just think for a guy his size, he's winning those puck battles. He's a good skater for his size. He can kill penalties. I think this is a really safe pick for an NHL team. Now, it may take him a little while to crack into the pros. But once he gets there, I think once he's ready... He's not going to bounce up and down. I think once he gets there, he's going to stick. And, and a prospect that Corey Pronman is super excited about, 13th on Corey Pronman's list, 19th for Chris Peters, 20th for Elite Prospects, 22nd for Craig Button, and Scott Wheeler, the lowest on him at 25. The average rank is 19.8. And I'm, I want to read a little bit from Corey Pronman because you look at the guy who he's highest on, and he sees it as the pro projection is why he's so high on Samuel Hanzik because he sees those attributes that you mentioned. And that's why I put that scouts love him because they can easily see a world where he comes into their lineup and continues the ascent that he has. His game with the size, with the puck protection, it just suits North America better. The wide ice in Europe, and you could tell he might got lost on it a little bit sometimes, but here... It's chip it into his corner, let him kind of go back and forth with the D-man, battle it out, and then he has the vision and IQ that he's able to make plays off of that. So I'm a huge fan of Samuel Honzik. I, I think for story, I would love you know Vancouver to take him just to keep him in Vancouver, but I think he's probably closer to like the Calgary, the Winnipeg, like the late in the teens. 
I think that's where we probably see Samuel Hansa come out off the board. Yeah, I agree. And I think it was a great move for him. I'm not sure how he ended up in uh, Vancouver, what that process was like uh, comparing junior leagues or who drafted him or, or how that all went down. But I think the WHL was the perfect spot for him to land in North America because unlike the OHL and the Q in college, in the WHL, you really have to flex your physical might. That is a tough, hard, grinding league. And he's able to go in there and show, hey, I got no problem playing over here. And I think coming over to North America from uh, Slovakia at this time in his development was the right choice. He was the 10th overall pick in the CHL import draft. Now get this. He was the 10th pick. Hilsey, he was the fifth Slovak. So the Slovak. Oh my God. Wow. The Slovaks are back in a yes. big way um, for sure. So as, as we look with Samuel Honzek, pro projection, a guy who I think be patient with him. First year in North America, but this guy is going to be an impactful player, not only in the regular season, but he's a guy, Pilsy, that you can really look at in the playoffs and be like, okay, he's going to be a difference maker for us when the games matter the most. Yep, I agree. I've got a lot of faith in Samuel Hanzel here. I got him at four out of five stars. I like this kid. Ooh, there you have it. Samuel Hanzek coming in at number 20 on the Locked On Senators NHL draft rankings. For more draft rankings, head over to YouTube at Locked On Senators. All right, Pilsy. Great show today. We had a sale update, some rumors, some draft profiles, and I'm excited to do it all again tomorrow. We have some exciting yep. prospects to discuss tomorrow, and one of these days we're going to have a sale to discuss. <laughs> you would think. One would assume that, Ross, but I'm not I'm not going to put my stamp on that. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's an exciting time around the league. The draft is getting close. The Stanley Cup Finals is dwindling down, uh, maybe quicker than the Florida Panthers would like to see, but – I really think that uh, the Vegas Golden Knights are going to wrap things up here on Tuesday and it's going to be a gentleman's sweep win at home, Ross. We'll discuss that a little bit more tomorrow. But for today, we say goodbye. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators Podcast, your team every day.